speech won't be too long, it won't be everybody very long. And I'm Wilbur Doty, I'm president of the Jasper County Library Board, and I know you've come to inspect our new library facility, so uh, I will make this brief. Well, this library, like all modern corporations, depends on electronic information for reference material, CD-ROM, or online <coughs> computer formats. Our new library is able to accommodate our new electronic needs of the future. I would like to introduce the present library board, which is Bob Sousa, Miriam Lawyer, Molly Connor, Rhonda Stewart, and Mary Linda Casey, and Bob Barbara Leesman. And at this time, I'll introduce some of the people that are uh, responsible for the uh, design of our building. Our architect is Kim Rothenberger. Kim, you want to raise your hand back there so everybody can see you? Our general contractor was Ira Massa's son, represented by Dan Mastro, president, and Barney Van Keppel was the project supervisor. They're over there. Okay, the library equipment the contractor was uh, Robbins and Norman Group, represented by Bruce Robbins. Our interior design was Laura Thomas of LTD Incorporated. Laura, it's back there in the corner. I'd like to introduce Bill Moriarty, our board attorney, who gave an immeasurable amount of time for our library project, which the library board wants to thank him for his services. And I'm not for sure if Bill is here. I'd also like to introduce our construction manager, Jack Kellogg, who helped smooth out the many problems that we had uh, in our library. Jack is right back there. <laughs> we could have gone along with that. Our library philosophy is to provide informational services, educational services, and recreational services. To recreational reading. We, the library board, have strived to give the people of Jasper County the best library service possible. And we can only be as successful as the Jasper County property owners allow us, the library board, to accomplish this goal. My th many thanks to the people of Jasper County. <laughs> it is my belief that we have the best library staff in the state of Indiana, and our staff stands ready to demonstrate this. But no matter how much our library becomes automated, you will always have a human and personal <coughs> touch in our library services. And now I would like to introduce Beulah Arnett, who will reminisce a little about our old Rensselaer Library and her memories of it. Beulah? Uh, Thank you. And before I begin, I'd like to introduce my friend who's here today from Rochester, Mary Ketchum Fraser. Will you stand, Mary? Mary's mother was the last librarian that the Jasper County Library had before they moved into the Carnegie Library. She was librarian from 1900 to 
to 19.4. Stella Parkinson, she was at that time. When Lynn asked me to do this, I wondered why she chose me. And after thinking about it, uh, reminiscing about the old library, I decided the reason she chose me is that I had something in common with that old library. We're both old. <laughs> <laughs> My first memory of that was after I had learned to read. I went over to the uh, I went over to the library and scampered up those steps as if they weren't even there. At the top of the uh, steps was the um, the big desk. Behind that desk sat Ida Milliken. I never uh, often wondered if she ever spoke above a whisper. She never allowed us to in the library. I can remember that the books for the children were uh, right behind the librarian's table, her desk, where she could keep a close eye on us. I could even go there today, if it were arranged so, and find where the Thornton W. Burgess books were and the Augustus Seaman books were. They were two of my favorite authors. Then my memory goes to when I became a junior high school age child, and we used the library as an excuse to meet our friends. Often after supper, Mom, I have to go to the library. But I knew that my friends were going to be there. And so that was a good excuse and a good place for us to meet. Uh, however, we had to be home by 9 o'clock. Then we go on to um, when I was in high school. Now, we didn't have a, a school library at that time because they had early moved all of the school libraries uh, materials into the Carnegie Library. And uh, so we used the school library, it was just a half a block down the street, but we had to sign out. And often during a very boring study period, we would sign out and go to the library. Uh, and again, we'd meet there in the evenings to meet our friends. Then my next memory, I think, is when I was teaching in the old primary building and we often took the children over there to um, explore the possibilities for reading in the library and uh, after I went out to Minette we still didn't have a library and we often brought the children over on little field trips to the library the, li the children's library was still upstairs at that time they eventually moved it downstairs. The downstairs room was a meeting room, <coughs> but that was used for lots of other things besides meetings. My sister had a kindergarten class there one year, and while I was teaching at the primary building, Clea Beeman had a third grade class over there when things were beginning to get crowded. That was just before we built Minette. Uh, after that, my memory goes to when I got a little bit older. Those steps got steeper. <laughs> they got taller. And we went into the library, the books were crowded on the shelves, and uh, the genealogy room, which I used a great deal, was used by two staff members. Whenever I went in to do any research for anyone, I had to ask one of them to leave so I'd have room to work. So I do appreciate the, the space here now. I love that old building like many of you do. Um, and I'm glad it's being saved and it's going to be used as a cultural center for this community. Thank you. Thank you, Beulah, and I did not choose you because you were old. <laughs> <laughs> Some things never change. This library is still used as an excuse for people, who, for children who want to meet their friends. 
In fact, I met my husband in our college library, so libraries have many uses. <laughs> our old Carnegie Library served us well for 90 years, but its small size and the many steps have been considered a problem for some time. In 1945, a librarian was quoted in a Rensselaer newspaper as saying that the library had outlived its usefulness. Fortunately, we had resourceful librarians who kept the library going and growing for another 45 years after that. It was in May of 1984 when board member Wilbur Doty first spoke of acquiring land for the future expansion of the DeMott and Rensselaer libraries. That same year, a feasibility study was done by library director Kathy Salyers to determine whether the library should be automated. Well, that was nine years ago. But we finally have our libraries and we finally are automated. It takes a long time and many people to build a new library. If you think that the board didn't agonize over its decisions, then you didn't attend our board meetings. We're so lucky to have a board that is truly dedicated to providing top quality service to the Jasper County community. They gave willingly of their time. They attended many extra meetings. They wrestled over tough decisions such as where to place the libraries, whether the community could afford the kind of libraries they needed, um, negotiations on property. A lot of that was not fun, and they did every bit of it with absolutely no pay. I think they deserve to be commended for this. I would like, by the way, I think we have several former board members who um, were a part of our, of our background who are here today. Could anyone who was a board member raise your hand so we can see? Okay, there are at least two hands that I saw, uh, Ralph Smith and, and Shirley Wood. In February of 1991, more than 80 residents of Jasper County many of whom are here today, uh, went out with petitions in hand and secured the signatures of over 1,600 Jasper County taxpayers uh, supporting a special tax <coughs> levy to fund this library or this library project, which is really two libraries. Each adult staff member and several of our board members visited libraries across Indiana and Illinois, new libraries. Uh, we visited, made at least one trip in, in small groups to at least 24 libraries. We were looking for the most efficient floor plans. We were looking for the best designs in furniture and in lighting arrangements. The staff spent many hours critiquing each new version of the floor plans, which our architect patiently, patiently <laughs> sent to us, examining <coughs> furniture samples, looking at colors, planning furniture arrangements, we thought, of course, that we were going to avoid all of the mistakes that all the other li libraries had made, and we were going to have perfect libraries. But we reckoned without building codes, uh, without the, the different ideas and the expertise of our architects and engineers, uh, without the reality of the available dollars, and at DeMott, without the, the um, consideration of the building that we already had to work around. What we've discovered, of course, is that perfect buildings don't exist. Nevertheless, we're very proud of our new libraries, which have been created through the, the joint efforts of the community, the staff, the board, the volunteers, our architects, our engineers. We hope you're proud of them, too. It's taken a long time and many people to build a library. Will mentioned our staff, the best staff in the state of Indiana, and I'd like to introduce these people to you now. These people have been so instrumental in this building project, and they've been so patient in um, dealing with the turmoil that the project has caused. Um, I'd like to introduce, and, and, and when I introduce you, why don't you just come up here as I introduce you till you're all standing, and everybody can hold applause till the end. But I would like to introduce my administrative assistant, Gail Jung. She gets to be the first one. <laughs> uh, Gail expertly finished up the job that Cheryl Witte 
so ably performed until last August. Gail both bookkeeper and secretary for the library. She orders all the supplies for the building and she keeps me organized. Uh, Deborah Iser, Deborah, where are you? I want you to wave so people see you back there. Deborah Iser was our headquarters librarian during the planning process. Um, when we were beginning to plan this building and then Kim Garwood came along the present headquarters librarian at Rensselaer here, and she had the difficult job of taking the visions that all of these other people had and helping to make them into an actual building. She's in charge of book selection, programming, um, hiring staff, training staff, and all of the services that this Rensselaer library pr uh, provides for the community. She has an excellent staff, and I'm gonna let her introduce them to you now. Before I begin, I would like to say on behalf of the Rensselaer staff that we appreciate and want to recognize the board and thank them for their dedication and their support in this building project. This is a really great honor for me because I'm about to introduce what I think is the best staff I've ever worked with. They've all played a vital don't laugh really bad. <laughs> they've all played a vital role in the building and function of this new library. There really aren't enough words to express the praise that they all deserve for their dedicated hard work, um, day in and day out, all they've done. Um, I have written a special note to each one of them that expresses my personal feelings for what they have done and just my appreciation to them. I would like two people to come up first together, Sharon Schulenberg and Eileen Spurgeon. I hate to use the word introduce because you see these people every day, so I would like to say recognize these people. These two ladies, Sharon has been with the library for 24 and a half years. Eileen has been with the library for 22 years. Um, Sharon is our people person. She's the one that always has a smile for everybody. She plans our adult programming and does displays. She's our special services librarian. If you ever have a reference question, Sharon will always get the answer for you. I can guarantee it. Eileen is our adult services clerk. She is responsible for our shelf reading, collection shifting, and playing tricks on our fellow co-workers. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be without Eileen? <laughs> I'd like to ask Julie Bray to come up. <coughs> if you've ever had a chance, if you don't have a child, it would be nice to visit the children's area because Julie has built a wonderful collection of children's material and young adult material. Um, presently, she's getting ready for the summer reading program. She's our professional children's librarian and Glenda Brown. Glenda is our reference specialist. And I think most of you know Glenda because you'll usually find her in the stacks doing a reference question, uh, always searching for something for somebody. And um, I think she does take, <laughs> there goes one. <laughs> she does take special pride in her genealogy work. I consider the, her the in-house expert. I do refer people to her because I'm not any good at it. <laughs> there you go, Brenda. Carol Mitchell. Carol is a library assistant 
Uh, she's been steadily working with circulation and automation, and she's now a part of our automation support committee. In fact, she's the one we're going to go to with all the questions, and she's going to have all the answers. <laughs> she does handle most circulation matters, and I have to say this, Carol. <laughs> She keeps us on our toes. <laughs> she makes sure our procedures are consistent. <laughs> there you go, Carol. Bonnie Powell. Bonnie is responsible for overdue. If you would like to. She also works the circulation desk and answers reference questions. And Bonnie's been off with an injury, and we really do miss her, and I'm sure the public misses her, too. <laughs> and hope you come back soon, Bonnie. I hope you come back very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Trisha Reed. Trisha is a library and our children's assistant. She has a dual role there where she works at the circulation desk, and she's on the you always find her behind the scenes at the terminal, and she's real enthusiastic about the automation and, and computers, and she's really good with children's programming. The thing I want to say about Trisha, she always comes in with a smile. She's enthusiastic, and I think she's been a real asset to our group. There you go, Trisha. Jean Reynolds. Jean came to us in our hour of need when Bonnie uh, had her injury, and she has worked hard, and we appreciate her hard work. She's caught on quickly, and actually she's become very much a part of our staff. And you'll usually find Jean at the circulation desk, and you can always ask her a question. Here you go, Jean. Juliana Lakin. Julie is um, a circulation clerk, and she kind of fulfills two roles. She's a circulation clerk, and she's a page. She's been wonderful helping with the barcoding, the finishing, getting ready for the automation system to work, and we're real grateful for the hours that she's put in during the day around her college schedule, and she's a real asset to us. Very good, Julie. Rachel Webster. Rachel is our newest member of our staff. I think we're starting to watch your third week. <laughs> and then your second week. <laughs> and we'd like to welcome her to the staff. You can find Rachel at the circulation desk in the evenings and on the weekends. There you go, Rachel. Julie Isley. Julie has been a page with us for a couple of years. Am I right? A couple years now. She used to be in the children's room at the old library. I'm sure you all remember seeing her if you've gone down. And you can find her about anywhere in this library because she pretty much is shelving everywhere. She's a page, and she pretty much just keeps shelving in all the areas now. And she's been an excellent page, and we're really proud to have her. Here you go, Julie. Amy Sigmund. Amy Sigmund has the title of page, but I kind of think she's a jack of all trades. She worked in the adult services uh, area in the, in the old library. She was upstairs. And when you work in that small of area, she, what she learned to do is practically everything. <laughs> so, but you will find her shelving and straightening books. And, and if you have a book on reserve, she's probably the one that'll be contacting you or has in the past. Amy's a great worker. Jared Hancock. Jared is also a page. He came to us during the move of the library, and he has been wonderful at helping us organize the library and getting the materials in the proper place. After book babysitters, we had a little rough time getting all the books where they go because they all came back at one time. And um, he's usually in the stack shelving or helping up front. We're glad to have Jared. Thank you, Jared. Tanya and Jerry Gray. Tanya and Jerry are janitorial maintenance services, and they have helped us tremendously during this move and during 
some tough times getting uh, the area ready over here. And they've come at a moment's notice. Um, when we've needed work done, they've always been available. And Tanya's given us a lot of good advice on cleaning tips. And, and they work regularly to keep this library in shape. Thank you. This is my staff. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to recognize now Mary K. Martin, we do not leave out the K, who is our technical <laughs> services librarian. This means that she processes, or her department processes, all of the books for our library system. She's also our automation system administrator, which means that she has had to learn more about computers and automated systems than she ever wanted to know. <laughs> you might think that this double duty is enough, but she also finds time for special speaking engagements and to um, work as our, our resident authority on General Robert Milroy. And she, she talks to schools and different groups about General Milroy. Um, Mary, if you'll come forward and Introduce your wonderful staff. Yeah. <coughs> My hair got like this learning about electricity. Um, <laughs> 220 will go through the body if it has a way to get out. Part of technical services is also maintaining collections and maintaining cataloging, and we've been doing a great deal of that recently. In my 10 years here, my job has always been to maintain or correct or upgrade cataloging and that is something I've recently trained two ladies to do and have been more than pleased with the results. I have the great honor of having hand selected my own staff. Uh, you don't get that very often in the working world. These two ladies help me keep my <coughs> metal shoelaces tied. Um, they pick up my loose ends, they finish out things that I only think half through, they finish baking my ideas. Uh, my first staff member has been with me for eight years in a variety of capacities. She and I have changed jobs about as often as we've changed shoes. Kathy Padgett, if you'd like to come forward. Excuse me. Kathy is a tech services specialist. Thank you, ma'am. And Kathy takes care of a number of different jobs in collection development, processing, and in acquisition. Our recent addition in November is Carol Bachman. Carol, would you come forward, please? Carol came to us. Carol was another one of my great steals. I'm known for stealing staff from other people. Thank you, ma'am. And both these ladies were previously children's room assistants. Carol is a technical <laughs> services assistant. I like to get them trained. Carol is a tech services assistant, and she's been working with editing machine-readable cataloging records and learning the ins and outs of the new automated system. Lynn, thank you. all of this building project, we've had the often unseen support of the friends of the, of the Rensselaer <laughs> Library and many other volunteers. These volunteers have stored boxes for us, they've packed up our books with us, they helped us move the library, they even fed us while we were moving. They helped us unpack the boxes, arrange our display cases, we even had a group of volunteers who who broke down the mountains, and I mean mountains because it took almost a thousand boxes to move uh, this library, Mo to break down the, the boxes and take them away for recycling. All of the little things that had to be done that you don't think about. Our, we have volunteers to do this for us. Some of them gave tours of the building the first days that we were open. Today you're going to see the friends serving the refreshments, passing out balloons, passing out lots of things. Um, and give you, giving you tours of the building. Other community groups and individuals have donated furnishings to the library, including a number of the trees that you see out on the north side of the property, which were all donated by individuals in the community. I would like to introduce, because we love our volunteers, introduce Janet Kingman, who is standing way in the background, if you wave over there. Mm -hmm. She's the president of the Friends of the Rensselaer Library. And I would like all of the friends of the Rensselaer Library and anyone or any group who has helped us 
um, in any way with this building project or donated furnishings to the library, I'd like all of you to raise your hand. I think a number of them are off in the back. I think that we owe these people a lot. And I'd like to give them a round of applause. I wouldn't have made it through these last three years if it hadn't, hadn't been for the support and cooperation of all of the people who have been mentioned here today. Uh, I want to thank all of them for their contribution to this building project. It takes a lot of time and many people to build a library. We dedicate this building now to the people of Jasper County with the expectation that it will serve them well for many years. And I'd like to introduce Father Leonard Koskinow, who will close the ceremony for us. I thought libraries were rather simple places, and I'm really learning something today. <laughs> and that makes all the more imperative, I think, that we pray. That this facility which has been put forth with so much effort and generosity by so many different people, that it will indeed be fruitful. So uh, let us pray, and this will be brief and I hope meaningful, because so much could be said. Heavenly Father, you admonished your people in the desert that they did not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Now somewhere between earthly bread and your heavenly word lies human wisdom which feeds on and is nourished by all the goods of your creation, represented by the variety of subjects in these books that are here today. What a panoply God has provided for us, the cornucopia we say sometimes. So human wisdom feeds on these gifts of God and produces new facets and so on. We might say, I suppose, that this library is a small file cabinet. Some of you may disagree with that word small after working hours and hours. But we might say the library is a small file cabinet of the gifts your all-wise providence has bestowed on us. And so we ask you, fount of all wisdom, to bless this facility today and for years to come. Bless those who support it, those who have worked and will work here, and those who will search out its treasures, perhaps decades even down the line. May it be a bright gem enlightening your children and reflecting your infinite wisdom. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Amen. You're welcome now to uh, go into the meeting room for refreshments or to take tours of the building and today you can go anywhere you want in the building and <laughs> and there will be people except the computer room yes you can you can see the computer room but mary won't let you in uh, and we do have people who are ready to take you on tours of the building um, probably most anybody who's wearing a corsage would be willing to take you <laughs> on a tour so enjoy yourself